going to go ahead and start with the CD drive. First thing you want to do, get your tower vertical again. Go ahead and press in on one side here and your drive bay uh, cover will slide out. Piece of aluminum, if you do a lot of these, save the aluminum, you might be able to cash in, get, you know, maybe a buck if you're lucky. Uh, you'll need several, several pounds. Uh, you got the drive bay now, up at the top. If you want, you could even go down to one of the bottom ones, but I always like putting CD drives up at the top. The next thing you want to go through do is undo your thumb screws on the back. And these might be a little, there we go. A little bit out of frame. <laughs> there we go. Just simply unscrew it. Same thing for the bottom one. And it may be incredibly tight due to um, heat. Um, some of you may or may not be aware that metals uh, contract uh, when they get cold and expand when they get hot. So depending on how this was put together and what temperature, sometimes the metals will be really, really tight together. Interesting little bit of information for you. And just like the other one, other side panel, it slides back. A little bit away from the case and then up, up, and away. And there we go, another side panel. Should have just done that first thing we did. We have some anti corrosion paper. You won't need that after shipping, so go ahead and take it out if you're a system builder. Good idea to just put that into the um, box that you're going to be storing it in. And now you can see we have access to our drive um, mounting holes. And I think that's going to be a good angle for it. And we'll go ahead, put our CD drive in. As you can see, there's a CD drive. We got SATA. And if you look inside, you probably can't see it, but there's no rail, so to say, for it to rest on. So when I go through and I push this thing in, it's going to have a tendency to kind of drop back down like this because there's nothing for it to rest on. Every second set, you can kind of see right here, there's a little bit of bent metal there. That's where there's going to be basically a ledge for this guy to rest on. Um, so when you go through and do this, you're going to need two hands. You know, push it in. And see how it's wanting to go back. <laughs> and I want to go ahead and kind of hold it in place a little bit so you can see but there's a screw hole and you'll want to go through put your screw in it in both places here and here and on the other side as well and that's all it takes to mount the CD drive in so I'm going to do that real quick since I need two hands this is probably going to be the best lighting I'm going to get you but as you can see you go through, put the two screws in. I like to put one uh, set higher, the other one lower. Same things on the other side. Uh, this screw matches up with the high side over there, and this one on the low side on the other side. But uh, you notice how it's got this groove here. It's not like a screw hole. Like let's say uh, that that there is kind of like a hole. This is just like a slot. Uh, the whole reason for that is you can go through, put your screws in. And with the front of the case, you can slide the drive forward or further back so it goes through and actually matches up with the um, front bezels that you have here. That way, creating a nice, even look, you don't have this huge, staggered thing. I've seen some people go through, build their systems, and it's all staggered where one drive's sticking out like this far, the other one's like back here, another one's sitting out here. Each CD drive can be different lengths or depths so to say. So go through uh, just the depth that you need and you want to you know keep a one hand on it and go ahead and tighten these guys down make sure that's in position and um, then we get to hook up some cables. 
once you got your drive mounted, put all the screws in, all that good stuff, set on its side, the whole tower, and now you can start plugging in all the good power fun stuff. So go through, sort out your little mess of cables that you probably now have uh, from doing the power supply earlier. This one's a SATA, so we're going to go through and install our uh, SATA connector, which is a little hard when they want to twist up on you. Um, as you can see with the SATA connector, it is keyed. You have that one little notch there. And generally that little notch that you see right there faces the bottom of the system. So we need to turn this thing this way and plug it in there. Very, very careful if you can. And it should pretty much just slide on. You don't have to force or anything like that. And I think that is it. And now we'll do the SATA cable. Here's our handy dandy SATA cable. Uh, provided by our manuf uh, motherboard manufacturer. We're going to go ahead and plug that into SATA 2 on the motherboard. Uh, which is conveniently the second one you see there. Uh, making sure that it's lined up correctly. It's just like the power connector has that little keyed notch on it. Um, just go through, make sure that's lined up correctly. It should click in pretty easily. The other end is just the same thing, keyed exactly the same. It goes on up and plugs on in. It's that easy. That's it. That's how to install the CD drive. Now we're going to do the hard drive. reason we're putting in the um, connector into SATA 2 is we want to put the hard drive in SATA 1. I just like to make the hard drives the primary thing and then work down to extra peripherals. So, if you're wondering.